Hey bosses, are you looking for a way to market on Facebook that gets you a ton of organic reach without paying a ton of money for ads? In this video series, I'm breaking down some of my favorite free ways to do marketing on Facebook, and in today's episode, we're talking all about one of my favorite topics, live streaming. But before you run away in fear and terror, I want to let you guys know, I know some of you are terrified to go on live streams. I'm actually going to be breaking down how you can leverage live streaming within your business without ever showing your face on camera. And I've got bonuses, and I have presents for you, so stay tuned. Today's episode is totally packed in things that will help you to succeed within live streaming on your Facebook page. Now, here's the deal. Facebook's algorithms actually rank text posts the lowest, then photos, then video, then live video, and this is because people just scroll past text and photos, and they stick around for about 30 seconds on your videos to see if they want to watch it, but they'll stick around for 5, 10, 15 seconds or more on your live broadcast to see if it's right for them. And once they're there, they're way more likely to engage and leave you comments because they can interact with you in real time. So Facebook puts a lot of stock into live broadcasting and really extends the organic reach of live broadcasting. In fact, this week I read an article from Agora Pulse where they did a study between their videos and their live broadcasts and they discovered that their live broadcasts get 222% farther reach than their normal videos. Which means we need to be leveraging this within our businesses and I've seen this true in my own business as well. My live streams get way, way, way more views and way better reach than anything else that I'm posting on my platform. So here's the deal. Facebook actually allows us to go live natively through the platform. So you can pull up your computer, you can pull up your phone, and you can live broadcast through them. But there's not a lot of bells and whistles. So while you can do that, maybe it's not your best choice. In fact, I recommend using a third-party app to do some really cool extra things. So I work with BeLive, you guys know I love this company. I'm actually doing some really cool stuff with them right now. And BeLive allows me to put comments up on screen. It allows me to use backgrounds. It has overlays. It allows me to put products up on my uh, right on my screen. It allows me to screen share. It allows me to have multiple people on screen and do all sorts of amazing things. And they even allow me to do live broadcasting with just audio. For those of you who don't like being on lives and showing your face. Now that's not my only tip. Come back because there are some other cool things I'm going to be sharing with you in terms of not showing your face on camera as well. But if you use a third party app, you do have the ability to go live without showing your face. You can put up pictures, you can do all sorts of fun things when you're doing your live streams. So whether you're going live natively or you're using a third party app like BeLive, you can actually do some really cool stuff within your live streams. And if you do want to use BeLive, not only do I have some <coughs> presents for you, but I also happen to have a bonus for you this week. I am going to be dropping a brand new video with a tour of their brand new Studio 2 platform because they just launched brand new platform additions and so if you stick around on Facebook and here on the YouTube channel I'm going to be breaking down everything you need to know about using BeLive and how you can do it for free this week on the channel. And if you don't want to miss that make sure you hit the subscribe and notification bell so that you never miss one of my videos. You're going to want to make sure that you check out all these really great videos every Tuesday and Friday and the Wednesday replays of my Facebook Ask Me Anything where I live stream and answer your questions in real time, which is something you can do as well. Speaking of which, there are some really cool things that you can be doing with your live streams. So once you decide to start implementing live streaming into your brand and into your business, you actually have the ability to do Ask Me Anything sessions where your fans or your clients or your students can come ask you questions in real time. You can answer frequently asked questions. You can do interviews. You can show on location things. So here's my tip for you. If you are ready to go live and you want to jump in, jump in. But if you don't want to be on screen, do a lot of live streams from on location. You're actually going to teach people about something related to your business. In my author life, I tend to go live on location to show people things related to my books. Or maybe you are going live on location as a candle maker and you are going to be showing people how you make candles. So maybe you would focus in on your hands as you're working and you're going to be talking them through but your face will not be on camera. Or maybe you're actually going to want to uh, live stream and you're going to want to screen share. You don't have to be on camera while you're screen sharing and showing off a website or showing off a PowerPoint or you're showing off some type of thing that you're educating or entertaining your people on. So there's lots of ways to go live without ever showing your face on camera. You just have to speak and let them know what they are seeing and guide them through that particular process. Now you can be doing these question and answer sessions, you can be doing AMAs, you can be doing interviews, you can be doing on location. There's tons of ways to implement this into your business strategy and it's really going to help to to extend your reach over on Facebook. But 
because I know that it can be a little hard to go live, I want to make sure that you are totally prepared. So before you live broadcast, I'm actually dropping a totally free present for you guys. It is my checklist for your pre-show. So it's a pre-show checklist. All you have to do is go to live checklist dot kmrobinson.com to get your hands on a copy of that totally free to you where I'm showing you step by step what you need to have in order from your caption to your title to your thumbnail to everything that goes into getting ready for your live broadcasting. I'm dropping that for you for free right now. Livechecklist.kmrobinson.com to get your hands on a copy of that. And because I know sometimes you have to put a little effort into your live streams, I want to make sure that you are totally prepared with a list of tools as well. So if you are live streaming, you want to make sure that you're aware of a couple of things. So your lighting needs to be good. People need to be able to see you. That means using natural light. That means using uh, maybe a ring light or an umbrella light, some type of artificial light. Maybe you're using reflectors to bounce that light. You want to make sure that you are well lit so people can see you. More than that, you need to make sure your audio is amazing because people will forgive maybe not the best connection, maybe not the best lighting, but they won't forgive bad audio. If they can't understand you, if they can't hear you, if you're breaking up, they're gonna leave. So you want to make sure that you are using good equipment. If that's your built-in camera or your built-in microphone in your computer or your phone, that's fine. If you're using something like a microphone, that's fine too. You just want to make sure that you are testing that before you go live. Now you do need to be aware that you have some tools that are going to really help you out with this. And if you want to take a look at what I do within my own business and what I recommend to my students and my clients, you can actually go to kmrobinson.com slash tools because I have a full list of everything I recommend to you to make your broadcasts and your videos and your live streaming and all those fun things you do even better. So check that out, kmrobinson.com slash tools. But that's not the only thing to help with your with making your live stream run smoothly. So I'm going to give you a little pro tip here, just a little life lesson. When you are going live, plant people in the audience until you have a developed relationship with your audience. So if you're new at this or if you're doing a question and answer session, plant people. Nobody needs to know. They can be in the comments and once they start interacting with you, that gives people permission to interact with you. So when you're live, have somebody come join you and ask a question or have them respond to what you're saying. When they're in there typing and other people see that other people are typing, they're far more likely to get involved and that keeps you a little bit calmer too, especially if you know that questions are coming. Now you can tell them questions to ask or they can make up questions on their own whatever you feel most comfortable doing but if you plant someone in the audience you know that you'll always have someone there who has your back so I highly recommend planting people in the audience and if that doesn't work for you or if it's not your style make sure that you have questions ready to ask yourself. So these are frequently asked questions that you get. If you're educating, if you're entertaining, whatever you happen to be doing, you want to make sure that you have people around uh, asking you those questions, but if you don't, you want to have a list ready. So if you're using a platform like BeLive, you can have them queued up within your system so you can just pop them up on screen. Otherwise, you're going to want to keep a list next to you. And as you're teaching, as you're educating, you're going to want to open it up to questions from the audience, but also say, now one of the questions that I get frequently is this, and you're going to start answering those questions. This also gives people permission to interact with you and to hang out with you and to engage with you, which is incredibly important to your live broadcasting. So make sure you have those questions ready. Plant people in the audience if you want extra support and then make sure your lighting and your audio and your sound and your camera and your video and pro tip your internet connection make sure that's ready to go and make sure you have all these things ready as you are live streaming and implementing this into your brand now I do recommend that you go live at least once a week on your platform this helps your algorithm standing, it kicks your content out to more people, not just your live streams, but all of your content out because people are interacting and that tells Facebook that people like your content and they're going to kick all of it out to people more than just what you are posting on a normal basis. So you want to make sure that you are interacting with people on your live stream so that your algorithm standing kicks things out organically, whether it's your photos, your text posts, your videos, or your live videos. Now, here's the deal. I know in the last video right here, we actually talked about one of my other favorite free things on Facebook, and that is Facebook Messenger bots and how you can automate your Facebook page without lifting a finger after you initially set it up. But the cool thing is there's actually a way to interact those two things. So you can use bots on your live streaming. So let's just say this was a live stream and we were interacting and I wanted to give you that checklist. All I would have to do is say type a specific word into the comments below and it would pop up in your direct message inbox and give you that freebie right then and there. It's not like you have to click on a link. 
or you have to find the link to click on because you do have to click on the link as you're delivering it if you don't deliver it directly through the bot. So in the next video, I'm breaking down exactly how you can be linking up your bots and your live broadcasting to make your live streams even better and to automate your Facebook page and to give your fans an incredible quality uh, engagement and experience with you. So make sure you hit the subscribe and notification bell because I'm going to be dropping how to work with bots and live broadcasting in the next video. And if you've got social media questions for me, I would love to get those answered. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, IGTV, YouTube, and all those fun, fabulous platforms. We're answering questions for you. And of course, you can join me live every Wednesday for our Ask Me Anything on Facebook.com slash KM Robinson Social, where you don't want to miss out because I'm answering your questions in real time. Or you can write in right now in the comments and let me know what questions you have for your social media so I can get those in further videos as well. And if you're excited to see bots and live broadcasting, I want you to jump in the comments and type bots and lives into the comments below so I know you are ready to go for next week. Remember, both of these platforms can be free. While they do have paid parts of their platforms, you can do this for free and do all sorts of incredible fun things on your live streams on your Facebook page. Thanks so much for joining me. You can come hang out at kmrobinson.com and at kmrobinsonsocial on the social media platforms where I am breaking down everything you need to know to create a profitable business through smart social media marketing. I'll see you in the next video.